What is happening everybody? It's your boy Jimmy James 59 and got another build order video here. Want to take you through this week as you can see right this is a game played on the ladder at the uh, about a 1400 level of elo. So this is kind of the gameplay we're talking about here. Don't expect to see perfect gameplay, but expect to see some uh, you know competent maybe intermediate style of gameplay. Now I have a couple of build orders on this channel for archer defense openings, right? I did one with Japanese. I think I have another one with Dravidians. But I wanted to do another one of these because, you know, Dravidians and Japanese are seen as strong men-at-arms archer civilizations. But when you think of a civilization like the Persians, you typically don't think of them in that way. You think of them more as a cavalry civilization and i want to make this video because when you think about openings you don't want to just think about oh my civilization's cavalry civilization therefore you know i can never open archers with them i mean persian archers are not that bad anyways they're fully upgraded through castle age and the fact that you can make them only cost wood has some utility i still think the commander and tech hasn't really been figured out yet but all that being put aside right with with a civ like persians and when you're up against a civilization like the goths which is known for its strong men at arms russian potential also known for in general just being involved in let's say shenanigans in the early game um you know you really want to be careful and here we have the scout actually getting out pretty early to the base here which um this is one of the things right if we you know take a look right i think we saw that scout come in right uh maybe we didn't at that point um, i'm not going to rewind it to take a look at it but but you know there's a scout nearby and so you might think about in a situation where you're probably expecting to be up against men at arms right let's go ahead and take this off so we have some sheep out here that ooh, where's his scout at oh his scout went over this way oh interesting right so it looks like looks like we should be able to take in these deer or or sheep or llamas that's what they are we're gonna be able to get in some herdables and so what we're gonna do here right and if the builder hasn't popped up in this video before uh, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen now because it's a bit unique, right? Um, in that, you know, what we're doing here, right, is we went a little bit to food early. We just tweaked the build. We got our fourth villager on wood a little bit later, basically after we got this house up. Because what we're just trying to do is front load a little bit of food so that we can get up to the we can get up to the next stage a little bit faster. And as you can see, now we're going to send everything to food. And because the Persians start off with 50 food, 50 wood, they're a really nice candidate, actually, for an early uptime. As you can see, we're out there scouting, but we are scouting in the wrong place. Oh, buddy. Don't worry, we'll find it eventually, right? And when thinking about playing an archer defense, right? So you can see, right, we're getting this food, right? We're trying to get up to the next stage. Notice we've lured in no deer with this build, right? Right, no deer were harmed in the making of this dark age, right? So, you know, we're gonna get up there and you're gonna see we're gonna be able to click up and actually have a pretty strong time here. Meanwhile, right, we're on the way. We're gonna try to, to find, let's see. Don't exactly know where we're at. Do we have him yet? Okay, boom, now we've got him. Okay, we see him, we bounce off, right? Bounce. Anytime you're scouting, right, and you see enemy enemy houses or anything like that, I always really try to bounce over to a hill or a wood line or something and hug that so I don't run into a town center. So take a look at this uptime here, right? No idle time. No deer lore. We're using boar, not elephants, right? So this is basically the least favorable conditions here. And as you can see, right, we're able, we're getting up to the next age. And we're getting our villagers, right? We got five of wood here. We can get four of wood here. We have our barracks. We have our house. And we're gonna be playing, right? This 20 pop archer rush. So we've got the resources. Now, let's see how many resources we have when we actually do get up to feudal age. 
because that's something that you do want to think about in these builds, right? And our opponent, right, with not a lot of idle time himself, actually, looks like he's uh, going for... Um, so he, he's taking the, the, the extra villager, it looks like, that approach to the Goths, where because Goths get loom... Uh, almost instantaneously. Usually you can sneak in making an extra villager and still get what we might call a real pretty handsome uptime. This is really fortunate. Kind of a sloppy move from him, letting his scout kind of linger out there, knowing that he's far up to the next stage. But again, he might not be expecting the, the archer rush to be so fast because he probably saw that we were on gold, right? And so he's thinking, oh, this guy may be good for minute arms. Maybe he could be opening for archers. But not archers this quickly and we do have these three militia that are coming and we're gonna have a range up right when you're playing an archer defense you usually want to try and build things a little bit closer to the town center right so this is not that far right we, if we if we escape villagers back in there we can get in range pretty easily and so we see that he's up right and we're going to go ahead right we're going to try to get fast fletching at this right so you can see we have our wood upgrade we have a range we have a blacksmith we're going to go ahead, right? We're just going to go ahead and fight these men-at-arms here. And it looks like we're going to lose. We're going to take an L on one villager there, right? So we got one villager out of that rush. And that is about it. And boom, take a look at this, right? Now we're getting fletching as well. So we've got the fast fletching coming in there. And we have our second archery range. So with this build, you can go 20 pop. Get your wood upgrade, get fletching very quickly, and then get two ranges up. All right, so Persians have a really strong archer potential with them. And in fact, actually, as you can see, we have a little bit of a battle there. Probably shouldn't have fought that since that minute arm was pretty weak with the scout, but I'm gonna go ahead, try and, uh, try and clear our head a little bit, not have to worry about losing another villager, because we did lose a villager in that rush, which was more sloppy gameplay from myself, just choosing to go ahead and fight it. Probably should have just waited to collect some archers, played a little bit more defense, but the mindset that I have in this game, especially when I'm opening up with a with a build like archers, and, oh, if we didn't come down here, I might be able to, to have got in, but there's these skirmishers in there, right? What I really wanna do with this is force the other player right to be reacting to my army because i know right i know that my opponent here can defend with skirmishers and indeed that's what he's going but the advantage that we're going to have over him with this archer defense as you can see right we take a little bit of damage but we're just going to keep going away the advantage that we have over him here is that we're always going to have an advantage in archer numbers so he can play skirmishers all he wants, but we'll go ahead, right? We're getting walled up very nicely. Right, we see the skirmishers. We know he's playing that so far. And we're just trying to keep the pressure on and keep building up army numbers here, right? That's the goal that we are out for. And we're just going to keep harassing, right? We were over there. Now, right, we want him relocating troops over here to try and keep us from getting in. We don't necessarily, now if we can take some villager kills, we will. And in all honesty, maybe we sh should have just gone down to this area because man, he's really trying to get walled up down there. But what I really want to know here, right? At this point in the game, I just want to know where his military is, right? So I knew his military is right there. And so now I'm strafing back in this direction, just in case this military is starting to leak out. I want to go ahead and grab this hill so I can fight, right? At this point in the game, I'm really not trying to win here, right? He's walled up. We're not going to be able to win in the feudal age. This is one of these situations where even if we could jump in there, we might be able to take that fight. But with the skirmishers in there, it's going to come down to some micro. And at this point in the game, I don't want to play too risky because I feel like we have a lead. The score says that we have a lead. I'm getting walled up at home. I'm feeling very comfortable, right? 
But you also don't want to just sit back in your base and, you know, watch the wheels go by, right? We're pressing in here because what we want to do is we want to keep his army at home. Even if we're not getting villager kills, we're setting ourselves up for, a, for our next push, right? So, boom, we go in, we see his army is there, right? This might help just a... Right? We saw his army was there. We're backing out again. Right? We're backing out. We're controlling this hill. Right? One of the reasons I want to control this hill is I don't want to have to invest into armor because I want to get to the next age faster. Right? Okay. He's making this. Let's go back over here. Right? So we knew his military was there. Now this is a little bit of a risk. I don't think I actually knew that that house was getting up. No. I, I took kind of a risk here to come here. But we have this big army again. The objective here, right? What I want to do is I want to try and maneuver him at home. And hey, we have, right? We're, we're, we're very walled up here. No worries. Now, we're also getting wheelbarrow in. And this is something important to talk about with the Persians specifically. Persian TCs work a bit faster. So if you're worried about wheelbarrow delaying your uptime, right? As we see, let me take that palisade out. Boom. We know where his army is. Straight back. Don't be afraid to go ahead and get wheelbarrow because you're going to be able to research it a little bit faster, right? So it's kind of an advantage. So so that's what we did here. And you can see, right, uh, we're still going to have a pretty decent uptime here, especially for going two range archers, right? They should come in in under 22 minutes, which is pretty solid. A little bit of idle TC time there. Maybe a bit more than I'd like, but you know what? It's a, uh, you know, like I said, 1400 level game, not pros here. And again, trying to break in again. We're just going to go ahead, see if we can break in here. Okay, right? Now we get in, we see the market. So we know that our opponent here from this market is probably thinking about trying to get up to the next age, age himself. This is really, really good knowledge. See the army, right? Back off. Again, he's invested a lot into skirmishers and is very behind for the next age. He's just clicking up now. This is the power, right, of playing aggressively but not playing risky right and so again our opponent played that skirmisher defense i think in 1v1s you'll often find with playing just straight archers that what tends to happen is that somebody can go skirmishers and unless you really catch them uh really catch them napping um and sometimes you do but our opponent played things pretty well here um you know we just didn't we shouldn't what we weren't able to get that on him now okay so at this phase of the game right again because at this point you've seen the opening but since this is a particular civilization that this build order is named around we want to talk about options now obviously you see us queuing up some knights right our opponent's pretty walled up though so one of the things we're going to do i want to get the crossbow right because one of the things i don't know even though like we have barracks here i don't know if our opponent is teching into pikes Right? So I'm going to go ahead and get the crossbow. There's a subtle, there's another subtle reason for this, right? As we can see, he's walling up. The other subtle reason for this is that I want the opponent to think that I'm going for an archer opening. One of the advantages of keeping the pressure on, he doesn't know, right? If we go to his perspective for a moment, right? He has no idea. He hasn't been to our base since basically early feudal age. He has no idea, right? Now, he's on stone. We're probably guessing that he's on stone as well, right? We want him though, right? He's gonna get this castle up, right? So this is gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. We're waiting until we get plus two armor, right? Again, uh, we're kind of thinking that he is going to be on, uh, I'm thinking elite skirmisher right now, but as you can see here, right? We see the archers. So we see the archers. Okay. He's going for crossbow. Fine, right? Again, I'm just go ahead and back off. And gonna go ahead and control the middle because what we don't want, we don't necessarily want troops leaking out though. We have the knights to defend, right? Again, and now we're controlling this hill, right? We're just controlling this hill. Okay, and we're getting, right? We're getting our upgrades. I like, I think, when you're especially when you're going to get archers husbandry is really great 
And the thing about Persian Knights is they're going to do plus two damage against archers anyway. So as far as I'm concerned right now, he's playing in our strategy. Now we don't know about the castle here. However, this is one of the things that, that I've just kind of assumed at this point, and especially only showing him the archers, right? That, right? I'm hoping that he goes on Huskarls because I'm going to have a great counter and hoping that he's not taking into something like pikes or playing monks yet. Again, the crossbow should help deal with him. Deal with that. Now, if you're him, right, you really got to think about, you know, when you click on these crossbows, if you see that there's no bodkin arrow, that should be a clue to him that we are, that we're not planning on going crossbows for the long term and that we're planning something else behind this, right? Getting Bodkin and Crossbow is so expensive now. I wanted to prioritize Knights here and so we could get, get our Knights. I mean, basically our Knights are going to be fully upgraded here. And the idea, right, is to soften up this building, right? We're going to dive in a little bit here. Boom. We see where his army is, right? Hoping that he'll pursue just a little bit more. And now let's jump in. Again, we're going to go in here with the, as a unit playing this double gold comp because we don't know if he has pikes. We don't know if he has monks. But we want to try and snipe those, right? And so here we go, right? We're jumping in here, and these knights, right? Now we, we're taking a little bit of fire from this castle, but the plus two damage on these knights is really helping us. We're thinning out these foot archers like crazy. The knights are also helping out with the husk arms, right? Again, this is one of the reasons why we're going knights here, because we want to be able to deal with these husk arms, right? We want to be able to keep these crossbows alive, because what the crossbows allow us to do here. There's a castle right here. But what the crossbows allow us to do to just, just kind of sit down here, right? To sit here and be able to idle economy. That's what we want to do, right? They're getting some build kills, right? These, these crossbows are getting their put-ins. And so we know there's a castle. We're doing a good bit of eco damage, right? Our opponent is on three TCs. It would have been nice to get down there, right? Maybe we get down there in a bit. And we're going to leave these crossbows here. Now, we're always worried about the prospect of... Huskarl's coming. So we we have some knights. We're going to try and get some more kills here. We have some more knights coming. And the basic idea here in, in this matchup, but it's not a bad principle for other matchups either, right? Keep a few knights hanging around with the crossbows. We have some knights streaming in. We're getting to RTCs as well. And we're doing enough eco damage to where we're kind of balancing this thing out. And if we take a look at the stats, right? We take a look at the economy, right? We're still ahead in the economy, and we're about to get our two town centers up as well. So, so the aggression here, right, is paying up, paying off, helping us to get a bit of an eco advantage. Moving these crossbows to make sure, right, that he can't wall back up here. Right? Again, Huskarl is going to be uh, lingering around. We're going to try to move these guys back. Probably didn't need to bring all these knights, but that's okay, right? And. Right now that we're right, we're gonna get these TCs up. Probably right when you play, use more villagers to get your uh, get your town centers up, so they get up a bit faster. Not the biggest deal because you gotta remember with Persians, Persians have faster working TCs. Okay, now here's a big play from our opponent right here. Right, he's trying to get another castle up, and he's sacrificing a lot of villagers to do so. He's actually playing pretty nice defensively, trying to get these these buildings up right he goes for that palisade we go ahead attack that house right because we're trying to we're trying to obstruct this and we're getting a lot of villager kills so we're making it difficult for him to get this castle up as you can see right it's pretty close a little bit of a miss micro there and as you can see right with all those villagers he's going to be able to get it up but look at what he had to sacrifice right we we know we can feel we've killed a lot of villagers we can take a look at the score that tells us quite a bit we're on three town centers we're feeling very very comfortable with the lead that we have take a look at the idle tc time in comparison now some of this is because right uh we just got our tcs up so expect that idle time to go up for us uh we'll, we'll keep monitoring it um but some of it is because hey look we played one tc for a little bit to get the aggression and with the faster working persian town centers right that helps you when you're doing a one tc push that actually helps quite a bit with keeping up with your uh the other person's economy so persians are a really nice civilization to do this 
one TC kind of strategy. And as you can see, right, we're gonna go, we're gonna go sweep around, see what we can find. One thing we're trying to do here, right, this is, um, I think I might bring some guys back out here eventually. We don't want to, we're kind of giving up the middle at this point, right? Oops, idle villagers here. Hopefully they get to work soon. Yeah. We send these guys back. Look, he's on town centers and you can take a look at our resources, right? We're close to going ahead and getting up, right? Given that he's on so many town centers, we don't really need to all in castle age here. Our objective here is to harass, right? As you can see, we're getting, uh, we're getting that up. And okay, we're getting our idle villagers, right? People are back to work. And we're controlling the middle here, but we're not, we're not playing passively, right? We're not playing passively here. We're controlling areas. We have units that are stationed in places so that we know what's going to happen. So we're getting information, right? We're causing havoc and we're controlling the game, right? This is very different than what I would say is playing too cautiously and not risking anything. We're up to the next age, right? Right? I mean, we're not really risking anything here, but we're playing cautiously. We're not playing passive. Is it, is it going for another town center? Again, right? We have a big villager lead. We have the military lead. At this point, let's not let this game get thrown away. Could have got that villager, but probably was not looking at it. And this guy here, he's just there to give us some line of sight. That's his role in this game, right? Come in, try and get another villager kill. Boom. All right. So now how are we setting this up? Well, you can see we have a good bit of food. I'm gonna go get some stables. Now, gods can be a pretty tricky matchup for Persians late because you can't even you can't even make two-handed swordsmen. So really you're kind of stuck with either fighting them with cavalry, hand cannoneers, maybe, maybe trash bows, because goths don't have a lot of pierce armor on their infantry. So trash bows are actually pretty effective against the pikemen, but you have to deal with the huskarls too. So a knight trash bow combination isn't bad. Uh, double gold with like knights and hand cannons isn't, isn't the worst either. But trash bow is actually, uh, if he's going to go mass pikemen, trash bow should be able to clean that out. We don't know if he's going to do that yet. So right now what we're focusing on, right? Taking all this food we have. And we want to get to a spam of units. So you can see, right? We need plus four armor. Go ahead, we have so much food. Go ahead and get light cavalry, right? We wanna go ahead, get light cavalry. And we're gonna, again, this whole game for us was about controlling the middle, right? The Goths, even though Goths have maybe an adequate stable, kind of mediocre, Goths are not that mobile, right? And so Goths, Kind of want to push up and down the middle and so what we're trying to do with our raids is we're kind of trying to we're trying to control the middle of the field this game he hasn't expanded out we should probably do be doing a better job getting outpost up here but right we're in imperial age he's not yet and we have the mobility as well as you can see right taking into pikemen but at this at this stage very behind now here's a tip right 1400 level gameplay we haven't made a single villager till as soon as i say it until right in imperial age so far make sure when you get to imperial age keep making bills this was a problem for me in early castle age for a while now it's a bit of a problem for me in the imperial age something i need to work on now we're spending a lot of resources as well and again we're trying right to we're this is all meant to keep the flood from getting out of hand cause some chaos right we're just we're just trying to cause chaos here as we're getting units up because if he can't farm right then he can't get up to the next age he can't make right he can't make anything and what we're doing is we're stalling for time again right we're stalling for time because we want to be able to take this castle down we don't want to do it with just one treb because honestly we don't want him to come forward with huskarls and pikes and given that we have mostly cavalry there's no sense in fighting that right now no sense in drawing his attention to the trebuchets yet, right? We'll draw his attention to those later and we'll allow ourselves to build up more numbers. So we have a lot of food. We're using it to spread his army out now, right? So one of the, the thing that we're doing, right, by going out here is now we're trying to spread him out a little more horizontally. He has pikemen in the back of his base, more to the side, right? 
And now he's starting to push a little bit more, but now we have the Cavalier. And with the Huskarls here, even with pikemen, right? We're gonna bring these, these, these archers that they've lived for a long, these foot archers that have lived for a long time. They've, they've seen the world. They're there to tell you about the battles of the feudal age. And they're here, right? They're gonna help us thin out these pikemen just a little bit more. And at this point, there's not a lot he can do. When we have three trebuchets, this castle won't stay up. And now, boom, we'll be able to get into the next stage, right? And well, we're already in the next stage, but we won't let him get to the next stage. We'll take down the castles and it's an easy day, right? So getting to the topic of this video, right? Thinking about how, you know, we played this war, even though we're a cavalry civilization, the archers actually played a really big role in this game and what that did was it allowed us to control tempo so that we could get to our mobile units which is typically a unit you would think of think of when you are thinking about controlling tempo all this early on was predicated the flow of this game was built on the fact that we recognized that our opponent was likely to go mid at arms and maybe even could do it much better than we could we could have gone scouts against it but again Men-at-Arms can sometimes be pretty effective against Scouts, and if he came in a little early, then we'd have to sacrifice some Scouts to go ahead and deal with it. So, it could get a little tricky. We decided to play the Archer Defense, right? From there, we were able to control this game really from early Feudal Age, or early Feudal Age, Foot Archer, right? Early Feudal Age on through the end, right? So, that's been the video. I hope you enjoyed this build. I hope you can take this build, right? Again, if you find yourself with a sim like Persians, don't be afraid. To, to open archers, even though they're a cavalry civilization. If it can help you out in your gameplay, job well done. Let me know if you like this video, if you like these build orders in general, and if you use this in your own gameplay, I definitely want to know how it went for you in the comments because, hey, this is a specific matchup. Sometimes you might think about not doing this. So, you know, gotta keep those things in mind. But uh, with that being said, right, guys, I'm Jim James 59 and I'll see you guys out there in the ladder. Peace.